Okay, good evening, everybody. I want to thank you for coming to our meeting tonight. It's exciting to see all of you. Um, we're going to have a roll call by our city clerk, Kathy Valdez. The record shall reflect that all members are present. Um, if you all rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, it'll be led by Council Member Rigby tonight. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> In accordance with the Brown Act, I'd like to announce that as a result of convening simultaneous meetings, the members of the Buena Sanitation District will receive compensation of $147.75 for the district meeting pursuant to Buena Sanitation District Ordinance 2006-1. So I'd like to remind everyone tonight that the Vista Municipal Code requires members of the public to observe order and decorum at the meeting and to conduct themselves in a courteous manner. The ordinance was adopted to allow the for public input and to facilitate city business without disruption of our meeting. Applause is appropriate for items listed under the presentation portion of the agenda. Attendees should remain seated during the meeting and persons needing to stand are requested to step outside the city council chambers where video and audio of the meeting are playing. This is also listed on the agenda cover sheet. And so next is the approval of our agenda by our city manager, Patrick Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. There are no changes tonight. Okay, and now what the next is our consent calendar. The recommendations on the following consent calendar will be enacted in one motion unless an item is removed from the calendar and any member of the public can remove an item by submitting a request to speak card to the clerk's secretary. Items removed from the consent calendar will be considered immediately following the adoption of the calendar. And we have, um, let's see, three consent items this evening. So I, I, I don't see any public, no, any of the, nobody wants to, okay. Councilmember Aguilera. I'll uh, make a motion to accept the consent calendar as proposed. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, please cast your votes. That motion passes unanimously. The next thing, we have a, um, one public hearing this evening. This is a public hearing to receive public comment on the 2018 Regional Transportation Improvement Program Amendment Number 1. So the public hearing is now open, and Assistant City Manager Ali Zimmerman is going to introduce the item. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, with me tonight is Senior Management Analyst Sarah Taylor. She will be providing the staff report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This report is on the First Amendment to the Regional Transportation Improvement Program, also known as the RTIP. The RTIP is SANDAG's program that includes proposed projects for transit improvement in the San Diego region, including projects that are eligible for TransNet funding. TransNet is the countywide voter-approved half-cent sales tax distributed to local agencies based on population and miles maintained. SANDAG uses the RTIP as their budget document, similar to our CIP document. There are six VISTA projects that are included in the First Amendment to the RTIP. This slide shows the TransNet programming changes for these projects, including the programming for the carryover for the 2016 R uh, RTIP. The amendment aligns our RTIP programming for these projects with our five-year capital improvement program budget approved by Council in June of this year. And SANDAG requires each local agency to hold a public hearing for TransNet programming changes and for a resolution to be approved by the City Council for each amendment before any updates to the RTIP are accepted. This concludes my presentation. We are available to answer any questions. Okay, do I have any, any, any public? have any questions over here? Anybody? If, oh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I did have a question on uh, CIP 8290. Um, I was trying to figure out the sidewalk on Gannett Drive. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, the sidewalk is going to be on the north side of the street, not on the interior side, but on, so the, on the outside. Side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any? If not, I um, would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. And I'll move that we close the public hearing and accept <clears throat> Pardon me, and approve this as presented. I have a second. No, oh, Deputy Mayor. I'll second. Okay, please cast your votes. That motion passes unanimously. 
So that's the last, our only public hearing this evening, and the next thing are our discussion items. There's four discussion items this evening. The first one is the naming of the Moonlight Amphitheater stage, and Recreation and Community Services Director Theron Dickman will introduce this item. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Tonight, I'm here to present Colleen Kohler-Smith and Steve Glaudini with Moonlight Amphitheater, who will be presenting this item. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. I'm Steve Glaudini, Producing Artistic Director for Moonlight Stage Productions. And I'm Colleen Kohler-Smith, the Managing Director of Moonlight Stage Productions. Kathy M. Brombacher founded the Moonlight Amphitheater and served as producing artistic director for 33 years, retiring in 2012. During Mrs. Brombacher's tenure, the Cultural Arts Department of the City of Vista grew from a summer theater festival with only two shows in the summer to a four-show season of summer musicals at the Moonlight Amphitheater and a three-show winter season of productions at the Avo Playhouse. She produced over 200 productions and events and was instrumental in the planning and the reconstruction of the stage house in 2009. Kathy Brombacher's vision, hard work, and dedication has impacted over one million patrons of the Moonlight Amphitheater as well as thousands of artists who have worked on stage or behind the scenes at the Moonlight. Staff recommends naming the stage at Moonlight Amphitheater the Kathy Brombacher Stage. This naming would include the installation of a plaque at the center of the stage. Mrs. Brombacher has made a significant positive impact to the quality of life for the citizens of Vista, specifically through her dedication to the Moonlight Amphitheater, the Avo Playhouse, and the cultural arts programming offered at these venues. There's no direct fiscal impact with this recommendation. A $1,500 outdoor wall plaque will be funded generously by the Moonlight Cultural Foundation. We wanted to share with you a video tonight that uh, speaks a little more to the impact Mrs. Brombacher has had on our community. There's a house we can build Every room inside is filled With things from far Special things I compile, each one there to make you smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say we've lost our minds. I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. To a world that we desire. Every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all. For the world we're gonna make However big, however small Let me be part of it all Share your dreams with me You may be right, you may be wrong But say that you'll bring me along To the world you see To the world I close my eyes
that concludes our presentation. I have a speaker, uh, Mayor Morris Vance. Where is he? Back there, I see him. If we could, I'd like to ask Pete McHugh to come up and uh, to kind of go first. Pete was uh, instrumental in, uh, I think, bringing Kathy to, uh, to Vista, so I think he should go first. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'm honored to be here. Uh, Kathy Brendel kind of uh, uh, lassoed me right before the meeting and said, uh, put on your history hat and uh, see what you can say about Kathy's background. And uh, my wife and I have the honor to boast that we've known Kathy longer than anybody in this room, and that includes her husband, Bob. <laughs> I first uh, met Kathy in 1971 when I was a young teacher at Colton High. She was temporarily working there while she was working on some of her other artistic endeavors. Uh, just to give you the sense of the family background, I had the pleasure of teaching her brother Scott, who's here, raise your hand, and I got to watch uh, his now wife Valerie be a cheerleader at Colton High, so that was the classic match. Lou and I immediately recognized Kathy as a sparkling jewel. Uh, we actually attended some of her um, performances and, and shows in the, in, the, in the Inland Empire. So, you know, in the 38 years, I think Lou and I have been to almost every production, but we claim perfect uh, attendance because we saw some of her shows before she ever came to Vista. <laughs> In 1975, uh, I moved to Vista High, and we became Vista residents ever since. And in 1976, the principal, Don Rye, called me in and said, Pete, we have a chance to get this person named Kathy Logan. Do you know her? And I just, we have a chance to get Kathy Logan at Vista High? Oh, my. And so... Not that my recommendation had anything to do with it, but Don uh, was the wise man and immediately hired Kathy. And she was the drama director at Vista High uh, starting in 1976 and put on a number of musicals, up to including musicals at using the Lincoln, I still call it Lincoln, gymnasium. <laughs> In 1987, she moved to Rancho Buena Vista and uh, was there for some years. And I actually don't have the date of when she left the school district because the school district was and continues to be in mourning. And so we don't acknowledge that. <laughs> but uh, she got hired by the city and the city took advantage of her talents. And so obviously the rest is history and that history is why we are here. So in summary for me, because this is not about me or Morris, it's about Kathy. She was a sparkling jewel when we met Kathy in 1971, and she continues to be that for all these many years. Vista is the better place because Kathy Brombacher has been a part of it. I shouldn't have let him go first because he said everything I was going to say. <laughs> uh, you know, I served as a city manager here before I had the privilege of serving as mayor. And uh, most city managers uh, like to think that they're really responsible for everything that takes place in the city, but they don't really talk about it because then the city council would get mad. <laughs> but that's one that as a city manager I would like to take credit for is because that... Uh, uh, Pete may have uh, been here when she came to the Vista Unified School District, but when Jim Porter, our, our then uh, uh, Director of uh, Parks and Recreation, came to me and said, you know, we really need to hire Kathy Brombecker full time. And uh, to this day, I'm really proud that I said, you bet we do. And, uh, and so that uh, from that time, it started a relationship that uh, was, uh, was permanent and was really something that we all look forward to. I, too, uh, Pete, I think I've attended just about every one of the productions since 1981 uh, when I started here at the city, and uh, they've just gotten better and better and better, and uh, you laid a foundation, 
that was just wonderful, Kathy. And it's, it's something that uh, I think, as Pete said, the people here in Vista just sometimes they really don't know what the jewel they have, and and uh, they're they're finding out though as as we get better. But I think that uh, as you uh, have uh, done all the all the groundwork for this, and you've got everything. Uh, in order now that it can continue to be, uh, Vista can be a better place for your having been here because it is truly uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, operation. Anyhow, in closing, I'd just like to say that I've worked, uh, I've enjoyed my work with uh, Kathy Brown Becker over the years. She used to like, let me think that I got to pick one of the plays, you know, each season. <laughs> and um, a couple of them I actually thought I did pick, but. Uh, uh, it was just a wonderful experience working with her. And so congratulations, Kathy. Uh, we love you. Councilmember Rigby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That was a really great video. I don't know who made the video, but you did a very good job showing the history of the Moonlight Amphitheater and where it started all those many years ago. And before it was the concrete slab, it was a dream and it was a vision. And to know that now, because of your dream and your vision to have theater here in Vista and in Brengel Terrace Park, that has helped bring Vista to where we are today. Vista is a destination. And I think I was sharing with you earlier that I've met people not just from around the San Diego County or Orange County, but all the way from another state who came here for a family event and decided they heard about the moonlight, wanted to check it out, and they stayed in Vista and went to the moonlight, they went to the wave, they visited some breweries. They spent their entire vacation here in Vista just because they'd heard about the Moonlight Amphitheater. What you have done and what you have built in this community has attracted people and other businesses to our community. And the Moonlight Amphitheater is one of the brightest threads in the fabric that make up our Vista community. And that is truly a legacy for you and your family, but most of all for us as Vistans. And I thank you for sharing your vision with us, for letting us see your dream and be part of it. And with that, Madam Mayor, I would like to move that we name the Moonlight Amphitheater stage in honor of Kathy Brombacher. Thank you. Councilmember Green. All right. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, as well, I watched that video, I was moved. Um, and as that, the song from The Greatest Showman came on, I thought about The Greatest Showman and how he was an innovator and how he was a creator and how people said he couldn't do it. And he did it. And he did it big. And I think Kathy Brombacher encompasses all of that. And that you couldn't have picked a better song. I mean, it got me fired up. I was just thinking, oh my gosh, a million dreams. Um, so I want to thank you. As a kid growing up in Vista, my first experience with the moonlight, I think you told me it was Marshall Tucker Band headlining, Ty Herndon singing. Uh, I sang along with him. I should have been a cowboy. I should have learned to rope and ride. That was supposed to be what I was supposed to be. Um, but it was amazing uh, in the mid-90s, late-90s, and it is even more amazing now. I have four children that uh, live here in Vista that have all been taken in shows since they were little kids. And it's amazing to have that resource to bring them and the ability to have that culture here in Vista. And every time we're out anywhere around town, everybody's like, oh, you're that place that, that has that theater. We're like, yeah, only place in town. Come on down and enjoy it. So um, I couldn't be more proud of what you've accomplished. I couldn't be more proud to just sit in those seats and enjoy the, uh, the presentations that you put on over the years. And as a Vista boy, it's so amazing to see what it has become and just the jewel that it is. So um, you, dream, you dreamt really big. And thank you for dreaming big and for not being limited in any capacity and for making this happen. Uh, so with that, I definitely second Councilmember uh, Rigby's motion. OK, so um, I don't know if I can top all that, but uh, Kathy, I just want to thank you for what you've done in the community. I've lived here all my life as well and went to high school at, with Mr. McHugh, wherever he is. <laughs> um, he was my principal, I believe, at the time. And, uh, you know, you've in, influenced so many kids in, in our community. Um, now the programs influence adults, people, North County. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, you know, you've, you bring a lot of people to Vista. 
brought a lot of business to Vista as well. We were talking earlier about the synergies that we have in our downtown with the restaurants, the breweries, you know, and in the moonlight, you know, but the, the destination is the moonlight, the breweries and the restaurants are just something that they stop at to come and enjoy the moonlight. So I thank you for that. There is one other thing, you know, our, our Main Street project, the, uh, the person that's responsible for building that actually was coming to the moonlight and drove through Vista and saw that property. And that's how that pro property is getting built. So thank you. And I, I was sharing with Kathy earlier that I, that I actually was showing a house this weekend and the people are from La Mesa and they're looking at moving to Vista, you know, and, and I asked them, they didn't know anything about Vista too much about the downtown, but they'd been to the moonlight before. And so they were looking at, because they'd been to the moonlight and they have friends that are, subscribers from Orange County that brought them as guests to the Moonlight from La Mesa. So, and now they're looking at, at buying a house here in Vista. So I just think it's kind of, you know, it just, the, the tentacles go out all over the county so that, you know, the Moonlight is so popular and, and it's wonderful. You've done amazing thing for our city and we're so thankful to you. Do, would you like to, do you want to say anything tonight or are you just? <laughs> You're welcome to come and speak to us if you'd like to, we'd love to hear from you. But thank you so much for all you've done for our community. Thank you. I am so deeply touched by all of, of the honor that you've bestowed on me. This is something I never dreamed of. And uh, for everyone to be here and the, the beautiful things that have been said by the council, thank you, Mayor and Council and our city manager for this wonderful, wonderful honor. I, I can't tell you how touched I am and, and always will be. Colleen and Steve, who have taken the moonlight to new heights over these last couple of years, it's so wondrous to know that the legacy of Moonlight is in the greatest hands in the world, and I honor them and thank them for that. I just want to say quickly, if I may, that I can't think about the beginnings of Moonlight without remembering those people that really heard about the dream and that we were a small operation but supported the dream and took on this as a program, a cultural arts program, and that is, of course, Jim Porter, Kathy Brundell. Jim and Kathy were standing on that blank stage when we began it all. Um, and Bill Fort Mueller, who became one of my bosses along the way, infinite guidance. And of course, Marie Ertel, who was our first managing director, who went to Disney and became a major producer and returned to be the project manager of the new stage house. How wondrous is that? I think the heavens blessed us with all of that. Um, the Moonlight Cultural Foundation continues to be an incredible partner to Moonlight. And I have so many friends who are donors and patrons and people who've raised money dollar by dollar to help build that stage house and sell the dream of it. And I thank each of them who are here tonight and all of the legacy that goes to the volunteers who have pledged their time. I really feel that we're a community of believers in this theater. We are a community and that I'm incredibly proud that Moonlight is going to go forward in the new generations with great leadership. Thank you, and I must thank my husband for his all, all, all of his support and understanding and patience through the years. I am very joyful, thank you. Thank you for the great honor you've given me. We're so proud. Yeah. First, first we'll, we're going to vote on this. So, so if you um, we'll vote on this, and then I think we should. The council would like to come down and do a photo with you. So, proud to announce that it's unanimous. Yay! <laughs>
No, there would be nobody left just for our audience. <laughs> Janice. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. So we, I'll, I'll wait a minute until they get out. Okay, next on our agenda is our second discussion items. It's um, Central Vista Business Improvement District update. And our Economic Development Director, Kevin Hamm, is going to introduce the item. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> give, give, give just a second until they, they're almost out. Okay. Okay, Mr. Ham. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. With me this evening is Jennifer Shenick. She's our new Economic Development Specialist, so I wanted to introduce you to her if you had not met her yet. <laughs> so this evening, uh, we're discussing the CVBID update by the Vista Village Business Association, and on Jan uh, June 26th of this year, the Council approved an agreement with the Vista Village Business Association for the Central Vista Business Improvement District, the CVBID. And they are to come to council a few times a year to give you an update on their progress and the status of their programs. And so this item this evening has been scheduled specifically for that purpose. However, the VVBA had no one available this evening to present this item, and they did not give us a PowerPoint presentation. So attached to your agenda report is their first quarter update for the 18-19 fiscal year. That is what we have to present to you this evening, and Jennifer and I are available to answer any questions. Councilmember Aguilera, Deputy Mayor Aguilera. Well, I guess, uh, given that nobody's here from the VBA, um, is there a way that, uh, well, I know they're having some issues. It's difficult. You know, they're volunteers, right? They're business owners, and uh, it's difficult to do this for free. And I really do appreciate everything they have done over the years, but I know they've had some difficulties recently. I'm just wondering, is there a, a way that we could uh, help finish this out, this cycle? Uh, what options are available if they're not able to do this? So we've thought about that a little bit, working with them over the last couple of months. Um, they're a dedicated group of volunteers, but they are volunteers. And it's difficult for them to have the experience and the knowledge how to undertake the administrative tasks for the Central Vista Business Improvement District. So I think one of the recommendations is that as staff, we take over management of the CVBID and the programs for the rest of this fiscal year. We work with them to close out those programs that they currently have, work with the Central Vista Business Improvement District uh, that oversees the expenditure of these monies in the programs to carry them out in accordance with the six goals that we have uh, with regard to the CVBID. And then we would come back to you, at, let's say in February, to talk about the 1920 fiscal year, how we recommend going forward. I think, yeah, I think that makes sense to me. I think that's what we should do. Councilmember Green. <clears throat> so that makes sense to me as well. I've sat on their, their board, actually, and I think in the two years I've been on the council, we've had four different VVBA leaders, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been kind of transitioning, and we were promised by Neil, their former president, that this was the year and they were going to move forward. And it's my understanding he's no longer the president. So as a council, it puts us in a real tough situation to continue to give taxpayer dollars to an organization that is constantly turning over with really not a whole lot of, uh, you know, accountability per se even. So um, for me, I, I, I know they've worked on the Winterfest coming up. I've kind of seen it on social media and stuff. So I'm sure they have a plan for it. So I don't necessarily want to 
municipal funding from that particular event because I think we're all kind of looking forward to it. But at the same token, I definitely think staff kind of taking it over and maybe finding maybe different organizations to do whatever the events are. Say we committed to four events to our bid members, maybe have different you know, organizations run each event and maybe it doesn't have to be the same events we've done, but something to attract business to that area. As a business owner in that area, you want to make sure that they have a tangible benefit of those taxes that they're paying. And, you know, the VBBA has been around since the early 90s, 93, is that when it was established? Early and 90s. A, and a lot of Vistans don't know much about the VBBA yet as a city. We've thrown hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars at them over the years. So for me, I, I really appreciate the community involvement. I love having business owners that are volunteers, but they do have a business that they're accountable to first. And I understand that they have to feed their families. So my recommendation, I hope my councils, you know, support that we allow them to do maybe the next event. But from here on out, we kind of say, hey, if you want to be the VVBA, it can still be in existence as its own 501c3 nonprofit. They can still facilitate, you know, solicit for grants. They can still put on events. They can still work with us, but I think having the city kind of separated from them moving forward might be better for that organization to try to stand on its own. Um, but for now, obviously finish the end of the year and then moving forward, maybe we could talk about what that would look like. So anyway, I've thought about it a lot and that's kind of where I'm at with it. Thank you. Councilor Rigby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for being here and talking to us and giving us this very brief report. Um, as much as when we had this discussion in June, the handwriting for me was on the wall, hence I voted against the contract to begin with. No matter the people at the VVBA, no matter who the executive director has been or the president has been or the makeup of the board has been, it has not been a good business model and it's not been successful. They've had so many problems over the years that they've not been able being able to overcome. So in June, you could kind of see this coming. But they had said they really wanted to work at it. As Councilman Green alluded to, they stood here and said this was going to be their banner year. And, and yet, it wasn't their banner year. And we heard of, of even more discourse among the board members, even very recently. And then they are not here tonight to talk to us and give us any information from them. So for me, that kind of seals the fate, in my opinion, for the VVBA period. And so I, I don't know if you're looking for a motion or a recommendation, but I would like to propose a motion if that's where we need to go. Yeah, we need a motion and a vote from the City Council to terminate the agreement. I move that we terminate the agreement with the VVBA and that staff take over the duties of administering those and then put it out to another RFP to have, some, to have somebody bid. If my colleagues want to go with another um, company to do that or leave it in-house. But I would move that we terminate the contract, staff continue for the remainder of the funds for this year, and then we will revisit this. How about that? That's my motion. And I, just if I could jump in real quick, as Mr. Ham mentioned, we'll come back to you in February to get your uh, opinions and discussion on how we move forward. Right. So then my motion would be to terminate the contract and staff finish out this year. Thank you. Councilmember Franklin. Can you describe for us what you believe will be the implications of moving the funding? First of all, what is the remaining amount of the contract? Approximately about maybe fifteen to twenty thousand dollars has been expended. Uh, we've given them, in the current fiscal year of the grant, $8,333 for their first five months. Um, they can't spend more than about $1,600 a month. So that mostly will go to completing Winterfest. So we'll sit down with them and work through those commitments that they've already gone through. When we send them the letter tomorrow, immediately they have to stop operations and expending funds as it relates to the Central Vista Business Improvement District. Some of the programs will continue. So for example, the Rod Run is managed and fully funded by the Vista Village Business Association outside of the CVBID funds. So some of those activities may in fact continue. I'm sorry, I didn't understand because you gave me a couple numbers there, but what, what was the amount? I remember we reduced it. What was the total amount of this year's contract? 
So we've given them a bid monies, which is about 53,000, and the grant is 20,000. And of the 20,000, we've only give them, given them five months, which is $8,333. Okay. So, so, so of the $20,000 left, there's about 11,000 left of the 20,000 so far. 11,000 of the grant, which was 20,000, and, and they've received how much of the 53,000 in bid fees? None. What was that a lump sum payment that we make? The lump sum is the $20,000, but we were waiting on a few things from them that we did not receive, so we only gave them partial money because we saw the challenge with regard to their operations. Okay, so that's the grant, which is the 20000 Yes. What about the bid fees? How are those paid? Are they paid so we, once annually? Yes. Yeah, so typically what we do after this meeting, and they give a presentation to council, we will typically release those funds. Given that we're terminating the contract, we will not release those funds. That was one quarter of the funds, correct? The Because we no. entered into this agreement how many months ago? June. So five months ago, and in and, and and that five months, we haven't released any of the bid fees to them? No. So we hold the bid fees until after they give their first quarter report, which is okay. tonight. Okay. Since they haven't given that first quarter the end report. Of their first fiscal quarter. Yeah. Or when their report was due for the yes. first fiscal quarter. Okay. Got it. Okay. Very good. Councilmember Green. So two questions. Number one is kind of alluding to what Councilmember Franklin was saying, since they've been in business for five months throughout the year and we had a contract to give them bid fees throughout the year, do we have to give them the five months of bid fees and arrears that they were entitled to for acting as the VVBA within that five month period? Well, with the contract, what I would imagine is we're going to sit down with them and see what they've expended. They also have their own monies. Uh -huh. uh, so as a matter of fact, with regard to staff, they haven't been able to pay staff, mm -hmm. so they haven't had that expense. So that's a line item on their budget, whether it's in the VVBA budget or the CVBID budget, that we may not have to pay for. Yeah, my question, though, is, is that if we contracted them and said, hey, we're going to give you the year's bid money, which is a total of you know, $53,000 and, you know, they worked under that preface thinking that, hey, in January we're supposed to get 42, you know, 40, do the math yourself, I haven't done it, but by now they're thinking that, hey, you owe us $20,000 after this meeting and another $25,000 for the rest of the year, so we're going to get a big lump sum payment. By us terminating the contract, we don't give them any arrears payment. We obviously give them no future payment, but we give them no arrears payment either for the CBB Eddy work? No, I would say that for those monies that they've expended under the contract, I would have to work with our city attorney, but I would think that we're liable for that. But there isn't a lot of money as it relates to that first quarter and bid funds that they've expended, a lot of it comes after the first of the year. Okay, but if they're under contract to expend some of that, we're not going to leave them high and dry. Like you said, the, the ROD fund's fully funded. If they've only got eight grand from us this year, they didn't fund it with just that, I would assume. They must have been relying on something. So my whole thing is, hey, they are volunteers. They do have businesses. They are property owners. I don't want to you know, affect anybody financially from that aspect. So I, I would like to figure out what we're doing. If, if there are approved CV, CVBID expenditures, funds that were allocated, then we will reimburse them for that. But I think what Mr. Ham saying is there was very few of those. Okay. So it's, it's probably they, a limited amount of money that we would be reimbursing them for. And we have yet to go over those um, funds, but we would make them whole. Okay, and then if you guys do take it over and run it for the rest of the year, are we required to create a new staff position, or is this something that our EDD department can handle internally? I think it will honestly save us time. Okay. No, I've seen Michael Luna spent a lot of time on the VVBA. I've sat with him in many meetings, so. Um, okay. Has anybody seconded Councilmember Rigby's motion yet? I will second the motion. Okay, and I see no further, we don't have any speakers, do we? So I see no further, so cast your votes, please. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to our third discussion item, solutions for change request for funding. Um, Councilmember Franklin asked for this item to be placed on the agenda, so I'm gonna ask him to introduce the item. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think, uh, it'd probably be appropriate to open uh, with a presentation from Chris Megason on behalf of Solutions for Change uh, and any of his partners he wants to uh, address the council with. 
Well, he happens to be our first speaker, so. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. <clears throat> With the feedback that you provided us <clears throat> following our last presentation to you a few months ago, and with a, a lucky break, uh, we're back with what we believe is an optimal solution for the city, for our Vista community, and for the families that we serve. As you'll recall, we couldn't quite get the construction design elements uh, that we needed to get right for a good fit for the location on East Vista Way. And you asked us, uh, with Council Member Franklin's leadership, asked us to consider a different site. So as luck would have it, or as I call it, divine navigation, um, uh, we, the, the apartment owner next to our main campus on West California, who had, who had originally uh, wasn't interested in selling, agreed <clears throat> to sell. He reversed his decision and, and agreed to sell. And shortly after that, another adjacent property owner um, surprisingly agreed to sell. So this was our first choice to begin with back a couple of years ago when we first began uh, conversations with city staff. Um, and now with two key parcels under contract and three more that we own, uh, we're able to come back to you with uh, the main campus expansion that we originally had hoped for. So the positives with this site are, uh, we can do it for about half the amount that we asked from you in the beginning of the year. It's an existing residential site. Uh, so with East Vista Way, we, we were talking about you know, conversion from commercial to multifamily. It meets with one of the council priorities in that we can convert an old apartment, and that apartment has a tough history. We know because it's only feet away from our uh, existing complex, and we get a lot of marijuana smoke and other um, nefarious behavior right there that we've had to deal with over the years. And we can transform it into something very positive, like we did uh, for you on our Postal Way site. <clears throat> it allows us to sell our East Vista Way site to a buyer who will build something nice for Vista's commercial corridor. Uh, it also consolidates our programmatic delivery services into one location, thereby strengthening a, a vital nonprofit resource that serves a critical need for Vista. I, I understand that you know a lot about our programs. We've been here for 19 years, so I'm not going to get into, uh, into anything deep with our programs, but for the record, I'll, I'll highlight a couple of key things that I know are important to you. So a lot of times, as you know, nonprofits, especially when you uh, get robust like Solutions is, we've now expanded North County wide. Uh, you asked us, this council asked us 15 years ago, hey, Chris, these aren't just Vista families. Um, you know, what about the other cities? And so we spend an enormous amount of time and energy here in asking those other cities if, if Solutions for Change is something we would want to consider, and they invited us in. So they invited us to these other cities. So we took your recommendations and your advice very seriously. We went to the other cities and said, look, this is helping a lot of families here. They're from your cities. Would you want to be part of this? And they now are. Escondido, San Marcos, Oceanside, which we just opened, and even Carlsbad um, have uh, invited us into their city. So, um, and, and the important thing there is, is we don't mission creep. You know what that term is? A nonprofit sometimes will mission creep. And we're not getting into other uh, homeless areas, right? We're focused and totally all in on families and helping families and lifting those families up. And really what we specialize in is transforming the lives of these families and Vista families in particular and moving them out of dependency into jobs uh, and by equipping them to be productive, healthy neighbors. Simply put, uh, your $2.7 million investment here will return 12 times that amount in public cost savings and positive economic input. This is what we know. This is what we track and how we take families out of deep poverty, welfare dependent, food stamp dependent, and now transform them into jobs. Also in 2013, we made a promise to you and to four other city council uh, uh, members for other city council um, uh, along the up, up and down the 78 corridor. And <clears throat> we are going to keep that promise despite enormous uh, challenges that have hit us very hard here, as you know, in these last few years with the loss of major federal and state uh, homelessness funding. Their, their um, policy uh, redesigns were issued and solutions for change, as you've heard, 
uh, had uh, a choice to make, and, and these top-down policy requirements forced us to either choose between keeping our personal accountability model or allowing active illicit drug users in our drug-free family programs. And the promise to you and all the city council members is that we would maintain those drug-free uh, programs for you and for the community. And so rather than use those policy changes, as many nonprofits would be probably forced to, as a basis to abandon our promise to you, we stood firm and voluntarily gave back over $600,000 in federal and state funding. And now that equates to millions of dollars that we have voluntarily given up to maintain that promise that we made to the, all the city councils in 2013. And then also lastly, um, I, I thought it was just important to note that you know, Solutions uh, Vista here, it's where we started, as you know. This is our home. Uh, this is what we're, who we're committed to. We're committed to you. Over the years, we've served 30 to 35 percent of all the families we serve come from Vista. And so um, we think that's significant. I mean, without, and, and now instead of 50 families that we were serving in 2010, we're serving 197 families. So we're a significant resource, not just give them, giving them housing, uh, but lifting them up, equipping them, and getting them out of dependency, and getting them as healthy contributors back in our community. So I'm asking that you direct city staff to work with us in developing a DDA that we would bring back to the council for your ratification. I'd be pleased to answer any questions regarding the proposed DDA or any other questions you might have about our project. I also have my development partner here from Kingdom Development, William Leach, who'd be happy to answer any technical related questions. Thank you very much. Do you want to do that? I have one more speaker. Yeah, let's hear all the speakers. Okay, I have one more speaker, but sit in the front row maybe. <laughs> Don't go too far away. Jennifer Pankey. Hi. No, you guys always make me nervous. So I'm just going to talk to you like this. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, I've been thinking about like what I want to say to have, you know, to convey um, what's going through my mind. But I'm really glad that tonight was the Moonlight Amphitheater. Um, it was on the agenda and the video that they showed. What spoke to me in the video is the unrelenting human spirit. And I think that the city of Vista has... We have this thread that connects us all together, and, it, and it's hope. And when I was a first, uh, and I first came into Solutions for Change, that's what kept me going in the dark times. Was that I had a community that supported me, um, and that cared about my well-being, and that wanted to see my children have a future, and that wanted to not for anything else, but just to make me a better human being and a better mom. Um, and being afforded that opportunity has been life-changing for me and, um, and my children, which is the next generation of Vistans that are growing up and that are going to be part of the community. And um, I wanted to thank you all on, on this board just for, for being part of that unrelenting human spirit, for fighting for Vistans, for just being pioneers for the city of Vista because I know it's not the paycheck. I get it. I work for a nonprofit. So um, I just wanted to convey that um, everything about this proposal makes sense. Um, the neighborhood that it's going to be put up in it needs some major work. There's an apartment, like Chris said, the apartment complex is very dilapidated. It's very run down. It needs a lot of um, work and it's also right on a major street so it's just it beautifies the city it helps homeless families um i i think we call that a win-win so um thank you for letting me speak tonight thank you okay got lots of people up here want to speak okay coach wilbur franklin so when chris brought the proposal to develop the west uh the east vista way um property uh, did not meet with our approval um and i posited an idea about leveraging the opportunity to find, uh, and it was a lot of good ideas brought together. Uh, I wasn't the genesis of all of them, but, um, but I kind of gave Chris this challenge that could we work to find a way to uh, swap the location uh, that certainly threw him for a loop in some public and private funds that he had organized, but uh, he, uh, Proved that he was willing to work with the city and meet us, uh, you know, on the requirements we had for design. What this item that's before us tonight is, is a request 
for the city council to direct staff to enter into a full conversation about what the terms of this agreement would be. Uh, tonight's decision by the council would not be to finally approve any expenditure or any uh, project, but instead would just simply direct staff to move forward with a design and development agreement that would lay out all the terms that would then come back to council uh, and we would have the opportunity for a full discussion at that time and a, and a final approval. And of course, uh, the development project itself will go through the planning commission uh, and all of the ordinary uh, review that any other project would uh, be entitled to. Um, I think this is so important because this project has the potential to put our commitment to solving homelessness and VISTA into action. We elevated uh, solving homelessness to one of our top goals as a council. And this expenditure, if finally approved, will represent one of the most tremendous investments that we have made as a city toward that end. Um, I think it, it also achieves or will achieve a finality in the dispensation of the East Vista Way property, which will allow for positive economic development uh, benefit to occur on a major commercial corridor. Uh, one that I might add we just made major improvements to. This is a part of expanding uh, the economic development vision that we've seen in the downtown to other parts of the city and I think represents a tremendous win. Um, and of course it, it also will advance our, our arena goals. Um, you know, I just want to acknowledge from the outset Solutions serves one of a number of uh, populations within the homelessness community. One of the things that we learn as we get deeper into the issue of, of really trying to make a difference in the homelessness problem is there are many different uh, types of clients that are served by different programs. This program is aimed specifically at uh, families and particularly those with children. Um, one of the reasons that I am so tremendously supportive of Solutions is because I believe in my heart that children uh, that are in a economically disadvantaged situation need a safe and a drug-free place to grow up. And the idea that children in this program and others that we've supported in VISTA can grow up in an apartment or a safe place to live that does not have active drug use going on in the apartments next door, I think is, cannot be understated, it cannot be overstated. Uh, it is tremendously important and, and extremely valuable. Um, one of the things I have really appreciated that staff uh, and, and the council did before I joined the council was that we in the past have used the housing fund as a catalyst fund. In other words, we have always looked to achieve a multiple of at least several times with our investment from the housing fund. I believe that this project has the potential to multiply the effect of our dollars. Uh, there is a proposal for a grant from the county as well as private dollars coming together for this project. Our investment is going to make the acquisition of those other funds possible. So again, we're using the housing fund as a catalyst. Um, part of our agreement will be uh, long-term investment and interest in the property such that we will have the ability the way we do with our other projects that we've built in recent years um, to have some oversight and partnership uh, in years in many years to come so that the next generation of leaders of VISTA can be assured that there's a project here that will continue to meet the community standards for many years to come. I think that Solutions for Change is also a catalyst organization that leverages the opportunity to take uh, not just dollars and resources but also lives and pay it forward. This housing will represent a unique opportunity not just to house individuals who've won a lottery but to house individuals with supportive uh, services who are coming out of homelessness who need those transitional services uh, this housing, unlike some projects, uh, which are good and, and, and I supported, 
But this has the unique benefit that this uh, housing will support a long-term transformation in people's lives. And really, for that reason, I think is, uh, is at this time, the highest and best use that I can find for these monies. And uh, so for that reason, I just want to call a couple of numbers from uh, Chris's presentation. This will increase the number of families with children from 40 to 80 that can be brought through the program at any time uh, that can be entered into the program. Uh, will increase the number from 90 to 150, uh, which can be enrolled in Solutions University adds 35 units of permanent supportive housing capable of housing 105 additional uh, persons and um, will expand the total number that can be served by the program from 140 to 350. This is a, a major, major commitment to solving family homelessness and to providing uh, quality, clean uh, housing in our community. And also, I want to underscore something that has really been uh, a, a goal and a vision that I personally have had and have discussed with staff and my colleagues, which is to take housing projects that are um, a demand on our sheriff's department and are not uh, of the highest representation of what we want for our community and redeveloping those uh, units into ones that are truly an addition to our community. So I think in two different locations, this achieves a real redevelopment goal. Uh, so I, I think there's so much to be achieved here. And again, I would just underscore in closing that this action that we take tonight, and I would make a motion that we do direct staff to enter into a design and development agreement. Um, but this agreement is simply the opportunity to open the conversation, a formal conversation, about the terms. Uh, and I would invite all of my colleagues to uh, provide input during that process so that when we get to the point where we have a final draft of an agreement, I would hope that this would be an agreement that all five of us would be able to support enthusiastically. Thank you very much. Councilmember Rigby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you, if I might invite Mr. Megason back to the microphone. Solutions absolutely does a great job for our community and for the demographic of homeless that you address. Um, there is absolutely no doubt at all of your success and what you're doing, and it's very, very much appreciated. Uh, but there are other and demographics of homelessness that we have in our community that need to be addressed that your facilities do not address. And as you know from our previous conversations, either here on the dais or in, in a private meeting, that has been the fly in the ointment for me because our monies are limited. And yet the homelessness, it seems, is an exponentially growing problem every year. And the demographics are different. So I, I had a couple of questions for you. Um, I had a meeting that with Paul Webster yesterday that he asked to have with me. And after a very long route to get there, the gist of the meeting was that because of conversations that you've had with other people in the community and perhaps some comments that I have also made, that Solutions is looking at expanding the services to include more than just the homeless families, but also the single men, uh, which is one of the issues that I had brought up previously, or some of the other demographics. I wanted to ask you about that, and I, and I appreciated the comments, I appreciated the discussion, but there wasn't anything concrete, there's nothing coming to fruition at this point, it's just a vision that you have. I wanted to see if you were available to expand on that a little bit for me. Thank you for the question. It really, th that question specifically, that deserves uh, a, a thoughtful and, and, and expanded answer. Um, but it has nothing to do with this particular project, but I'm happy to um, just, so the, just answer it quickly, which is we, we've we been asked by the National Poverty Reform Leaders, as you know, Clarence Carter, who has been asked by um, the federal government, Health and Human Services, he runs the Welfare, Welfare Department for right, the country, I, I know who he is. asked Solutions for Change last year to get involved 
asked me personally to serve on the National Poverty Reform Team, which I have for over a year now, and he has um, asked us to co-opt or to share our model. So the model is like an operating system. The app is like the Solve Family Homelessness app that we do. But the system itself, how we've developed it, is something that they want to uh, explore in a demonstration initiative here for North County, San Diego. So that's we're in conversations, in negotiations with them. It has nothing to do with this project. Mm -hmm. And in part of that conversation is, is, is how do we address deep poverty, not just family homelessness, but all the deep poverty issues in, in Vista and North San, specifically North San Diego County. And so with that, they're looking at multiple subpopulations. But I also do want to share with you too, I'm involved in a lot of regional conversations, and I will tell you that Vista is well acknowledged as being the place in the region, in the strategic conversations with homelessness in the region, where families get help. So I can take a family from Oceanside, for, for example, and bring them into our programs here in Vista, but I can also send a single homeless man, man to Oceanside and they would take them. So there's, there's programs in Oceanside and Escondido. So your concern about homeless men or homeless women Amanda, they are getting addressed. Uh, Vista does have some programs for them, Casa Rafael uh, and Green Oak Ranch, um, but there's also programs in other parts that we, uh, you know, help Vista men and other populations get into. So this truly is a regional kind of share, and we think, and I think, that Vista has a well-established and very good reputation in that conversation as being the place. Nobody is saying Vista doesn't do its share, and I will tell you that other cities get, get that rap, but Vista doesn't get that rap. Vista does its share. Thank you. It doesn't do I, more I than its share, that. but it does its share. Nobody can say Vista does not do our share. We do ours and then some, um, which brings me to my next question. But m my last question, so the point is, or I guess your answer is, you're not looking to do anything with that. You're not looking to expand your services at this point, which was my question. I understand very well what the project is you're talking about right now. I just found it very interesting that Mr. Webster would want to talk to me about that particular issue, um, but it was still in the, the thought phase, the vision phase, with, with nothing concrete to show or to discuss about it, so I wanted to ask you. Um, but you talk about VISTA. We do our own share. We do a lot of share for other cities as well. One of our neighboring cities, actually, some of their council members take deep pride in them not doing anything for homeless services. Um, and with other comments to that. So I want to ask you, you brought it up about San Marcos. What services are you providing in San Marcos particularly? So we're the managing general partner in Parkview Apartments. It's an 88-unit apartment. We did it in collaboration with Hitsky Development. And so they've carved out, uh, I believe, 12 units there. So we have 12 units of permanent housing in San, San Marcos. is okay. historically uh, represented around you know, 12 percent or so. So um, that's fairly, fairly proportionate to uh, to to, uh, to what we see. Okay. And then also in conversations with Paul, I understand that you own some property in Carlsbad that you're you are holding on to. Can you talk about what that property is in Carlsbad and what your vision is for that? Yeah, thanks to the Carlsbad City Council. Uh, again, they were one of the cities that, um, you know, we, we were showing them the numbers. Yes, there are homeless families from Carlsbad that we help. So thanks to the leadership there, we were able to purchase um, Chestnut Apartments. It's uh, uh, 16 units and given some years to develop it. So as we go forward to uh, win again at HCD at the state, which we have been very competitive and won, we, we then now cannot get HCD funding because we will not convert to housing first. So with that now, um, we, we still have one year to, uh, to develop that property, and we're looking at a number of options right now to be able to come back to the uh, Carlsbad City Council with a viable project with, with the year we have remaining, and we think we can do that. One of the options we're looking at is a partnership with Habitat for Humanity, and they're uh, thinking about this could be the first home ownership opportunity for families that have gone through solutions, and there's one of my top candidates right there, um, so we're kind of excited about that. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, Talking about the number, and you, you alluded to it in your opening remarks, 
the percentage of a the percentages of families from outside of Vista that you help. Can you go through that again for me, please? Sure. So um, you just I mean roughly because I don't have the numbers. No, roughly. Yeah. You know, you serve X amount of families per year. X amount are from Vista. X amount are not from Vista. Mm -hmm. So about thirty percent or so historically are from Vista. That's are, the numbers for like the last nineteen years. Right. It fluctuates. Sometimes it's twenty-seven percent. Sometimes it's thirty-five percent. Right. That's the number I thought you said, and that I thought Paul had said when I met with him yesterday. So about th roughly thirty percent. Uh, be gracious and say maybe thirty to forty percent of your clients are from Vista. This money is a huge chunk for us in this, this fund that we have to serve homelessness, which is, as we've already talked about and agreed to, is a vast population, and your services are reaching one portion. Um, how much money have you gone to San Marcos, Oceanside, Carlsbad, and Escondido, and asked for those cities to put into this development project? I, you know, having um, served uh, as the chief executive in a homeless organization for 27 years, I wish, uh, Councilman Rigby, there was a way that we could um, limit the folks that seek services to certain, but that's impossible. So every homeless organization in this city right now, I know they're serving people from all over the region, and many of them don't get funding from, other, from these other cities. Uh, I, however, actually uh, went through something that most said I was crazy to even attempt, which was going into all these cities and asking them to take on a share, a huge share, which was developing these other big apartment complexes in their city so that when a, for example, a person from Escondido, a family from Escondido would come in, yes, Vista would be the place they would start, but then at the 500-day mark, as you know, we're 1,000 days, they would go back to the Escondido um, apartments and finish out their 1,000 days there. And many of them, they grew up there, just like we have folks that grow up here. They want us to be back in that city. So that was a big part of how, why we did that. And it was, again, my commitment to recognizing that this is a regional problem and deserved a regional solution. So, so as a regional problem, I do know that... Uh, we have neighboring communities who have put money into VISTA for different programs. Um, and for their purposes, it meets their arena numbers or their conscience or whatever. So I do know that actually does happen. Um, so I just wanted to know, since some of those communities will be sending people into our community for these services, if you had actually reached out to them, also asking them to contribute to this um, funding that you're requesting to rebuild this. So those are just some of the questions that I had. And you, like I said, solutions, you do a great job. And I tout what you do. And I see the success that you have. I just see the bigger picture in my community that there are so many other homeless people that are not being uh, provided by your, your facility. And you have a model, and it works. And, and that's great. I think you're doing a great job. But we have such a little pot of money. And like I said, the fly in the ointment for me is that this is VISTA money. These are VISTA tax monies. These are VISTA. We're trying to serve the VISTA community here. And we have a bigger population that needs more help. And I have been asking uh, for other services to be provided, which is why I was, I was happy to hear what Paul had to say yesterday. I wait to hear how that expands and what comes of that. Um, but at this point, uh, this, this does leave us with a little... What you're asking for is just less than half of what we have left. And um, I'm not going to be supportive of this ask again at, at this point. So I appreciate what you're doing, but I'm also looking out for other demographics in our community that need help as well. So thank you very much for being here and being willing to answer my questions. Thank Plus you for your Green. consideration. All right, I might have some questions for you too, Mr. Megasin. Uh, First thing is, I do appreciate everything you do in Vista. Obviously, your model is fantastic. I've been hearing about the national model and Clarence Carter coming to town and heard you raise two million bucks in one night at your Deion Sanders dinner. Prime time, exciting things happening for Solutions for Change. Um, kind of similar to where um, Councilwoman Rigby is at, though, um, in your presentation, or actually the letter, it said that we're going to be able to service from 140 to over 350, which is like 210 
homeless people per se, right? Um, the regional community totals show that in the city of Vista, we tip, we only have 154 unsheltered homeless people total, according to the regional housing numbers. And I'm sure not all 154 of those people would qualify for your particular program. And I think what you said was, hey, you know, about 30, 40% of them may, which 40% of the 210 would be like 84 people. So maybe 84 of the 210 people are Vista residents. I think it's a fantastic program. I'd love to support my Vista peeps, but I think what Councilman Rigby's saying is, hey, it is a regional problem, and we might need to make a regional solution, which it seems like you've made, which might require regional funding. Um, the ask is $2.7 million for one property that is $2.1 million. That's 36 units. Is that correct? Uh, no, the apartment complex is uh, 11 units. It's 11 plus, units. Plus a single family home out in front. But yep. oh, that's the 476 West Los Angeles, right? Yes. Okay, and then the other one is a duplex, a duplex at 740, right? Yeah. And it's a 55 year balloon payment loan that the city receives no monthly payments on, right? It's just a loan that you pay back in 50 years. And currently we have $3.7 million in this fund, is my understanding. Is that correct, Patrick? That's correct. $3.7 million in the fund, and you're asking for $2.7 million, which would only leave a million dollars left over. And for me, I mean, I don't mind contributing. I would say, hey, if I'm supposed to take care of the 40% of Vistans, my share is 1.080. 1.080, man, that's a little over a million bucks, and I think that's a great, generous offer from the city to say, hey, here's a million bucks. You don't have to pay back for 55 years for your project. But I do think depleting the $2.7 million is kind of a lot. And the reason is all that money isn't just for homelessness. It's for affordable housing in general. So like Councilwoman Rigby said, is if you're going to get in the affordable housing business where you're like, hey, Vista residents are going to have first crack at these units, and these are how many Vistans we're going to help at the property, you know, that's something I think that might be appealing to us to say, hey, it's to Vistans. Because that's the thing is you're coming to Vista asking for Vista money. So it's our job to look at it through the lens of what's best for Vista and how is it going to help Vista. And I don't think that this program in itself, the $2.7 million, is going to solve our entire housing, our homeless issue per se. One thing that I think gives you leverage is that East Vista Way property. So this is my question for you, is are you willing to sell the East Vista Way property and the proceeds you get from that give back to the city for our affordable housing fund? So we pay, we buy these for you, you do your thing, and then we do what we want and we get that money from East Vista Way. Are you planning on selling that and taking that money to do something else with it? So can I answer your question regarding yeah, the other thing first? Go ahead. There, uh, Council Member Green. Please. Um, so the Regional Task Force on the Homeless will admit that they, they, they can't count homeless families, right? They, they do try, right, if you're sleeping in a car in the back of a church parking lot or what have you. We have 520 families on the wait list right now with over 100 Vista homeless families, right? When you go to any other homeless provider, right, the numbers for families are through the roof. We know this, right? We, we hear it all the time about the crisis of homelessness, and specifically for us, it's homeless families and children. So, um, so in terms of, you know, it's just a flaw with the county. There's no way that a, any counting system could, you know, count families living in cars everywhere and so on. And so um, in motels, they, you know, they're living in motels and so on, or doubled up or tripled up in, in other homes and so on. Um, and, and again, I guess, you know, there seems to be a, a real interest here in terms of, you know, getting the other communities here to contribute. Well, um, you know, we actually succeeded in that for Postal Way. The city of Vista, and, and I don't, I am not dissing the city at all, right? We were actually able to get Carlsbad to give us money for Postal Way, right? And the city gave us zero dollars, right? And we transformed that so with zero Vista money, we transformed Postal Way into right now what your sheriff, Captain, who gave us the raw data, shows an 84% decrease in call for services at that property. So, but the way that we can come to you and say, hey, here's how we again do the regional thing is by getting these other uh, cities uh, involved in getting their property, getting these communities built and, and their communities, so that VISTA isn't taking on the burden of the whole thing. That's, you know, I think a lot more than what, mo the, what many nonprofit homeless providers can even attempt to do 
Solutions has done that, and done that largely because you've asked us to, like you came to me. Your, your predecessor said, hey, Chris, we love you. We love Solutions. But man, dude, can you really help get these other cities involved? And we've done that. And we've even got Carlsbad to give us, I think it was a million and a half bucks for Vista property. The other good news is the Innovative Housing Trust Fund. I mean, the Innovative Housing Trust Fund, will, which is county money, will come in, and in many cases, as we know, social, you know, uh, service, you know, poverty-related funds come from the county government, not the city. But um, and, and then to to answer your question, uh, Councilmember Green, which now I forgot what it was. I apologize. Give me your East Vista Way money. Oh, the East Vista Way money. Yes, thank you. Um, so with that, we have a note from a CDFI, a community development uh, uh, lender, and we have to pay that back for 600000 The net proceeds after that will be put into this deal. Um, so we, we need to have all the money that we can get be put into the, into the deal to make the deal work. And that's something that as a developer, you know, we can come in and say, hey, here's some of our own funds, which I tell you what, most nonprofit homeless providers would take that money and run um, unless they got a council member, Joe Green, hot on the trail, and then it might be hard to do. But, but really, though, we want to really take that money and put it back into the, into the project. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's a good thing for the use of that, those funds. Yeah, and I, I obviously love what you do. My biggest thing is how do I get money back from my community? I mean, I would almost be willing to put out the $2.7 million right now if you say, hey, I'm going to go to Carlsbad and I'm going to go to San Marcos and say, hey, look, 40% of Vistas are served, which means 60% are served elsewhere. Drum up another 1.7 mil and, you know, help, help somebody share the burden with us. I mean, for me, it just seems like an unreasonable ask to say, hey, take care of everybody's homelessness as opposed to just yours with your money because there may be another developer that comes beating down our door in you know a couple months that says hey I found an apartment building and I can house seniors affordably and there's no requirement we can put 50 seniors in this development and that will help with our Rhina numbers and they can say those are only going to be Vistans 100% of Vistans are getting first priority so since it's our money we have the ability to attach strings to it to benefit our city and I think as council members that's our job is to make sure that the money we spend is benefiting our city as a whole and we're not really carrying the burden for other cities so I mean I'm totally willing to give a percentage of this I just don't see I mean they spend a lot of time on these counts like we have you know 49 living vehicles 32 living structures or tents uh, you know there's some that are in hotels I mean they go they, they, they work hard on the count so it's not like a pointless document in my opinion but I, I do know that there obviously are some that are missed but my biggest thing is where is my Vista money going towards? So you could tell me where, where you think it's going towards. My, my development Bill. partner. Uh, Go ahead, I, I just wanted to, um, just one thing, though, because I might not have this opportunity. Um, oh, you know us at Solutions for Change, Joe. We're, we're always, we're, we strive to serve for the sake of others. So when you tell me that this is your issue, my brain's going, how do I solve this for <laughs> Council Member Green? Right? How can I do it? But then I look at... I look at other affordable housing developments in this city, right? Do those developers also get funds from outside? And I, and I know, and this is a criticism, we hear it, yeah. there's a lot of outside people from that, weren't, that aren't VISTA people that Living moved in into houses, those yeah. things, right? So I guess when I, when I look at your concern, I truly want to serve you because you are somebody that's important to us, right? But I, I can't figure out how to do that um, as just being one developer when a lot of the other developers you know, don't do, aren't held to the same kind of standard or questions or line of questioning. Same thing with, you know, um, I, again, I keep going back to, man, we've done a great job being regional partners here with the homeless issue. And it, and it may not all be A equals A or B equals B, but when you look at it in its to total effort, we've done a great job here and we are a regional partner. So I, uh, I, I'll defer to, to William here. He might have something more on the, uh, on the finance stuff. Sure, and I, I, I notice a sentiment of curiosity about what other agent, or what other local agencies are investing in the problem. Uh, the city of Oceanside, we, we just finished construction together of the North Coast Terrace Apartments in Oceanside, and Oceanside put in approximately $7 million into that transaction. Um, about a year ago, we finished the uh, Escondido property, and the city provided about $2.5 million for that particular project. And Carlsbad invested $3.5 million. Um, and these are within the last five years in those agencies to get new projects started in each of these jurisdictions. Um, on this particular project that we're proposing, um, 
we are asking you for um, a little over 10% of the project's budget, and we hope to uh, get a huge investment from the Innovative Housing Trust Fund, the counties. Um, we requested $7 million from them. They were extremely excited. The change of the site made us need to reapply. And so one of the things is the city's investment helps you win other investments. And so the exciting thing is um, we'll be able to develop this amazing resource uh, here in the city of Vista, but we're also doing the same thing in these other jurisdictions as well. And I hope those amounts, it sounded like you were looking for some amounts. Uh, Oceanside was 7 million, Carlsbad was 3.5, Escondido was 2.5. Did they have any stipulations on the money that they gave you from the type of people they wanted served? So when their council gave you that $7 million, were they like, hey, we want Carlsbad residents served in our communities? Or were they like, hey, we're going to give you this money and serve whoever you want? It's an unspoken truth that people want their own constituents to yeah. live there. It's somewhat illegal. I to, like to speak it. it. It's a little bit illegal to specify we will only Please. have such and such of a residence live here because it's a fair housing violation. But we understand local preference and we, uh, we understand how to try to do the biggest local impact that we can. Um, but no, they did not specify it has to come from A, B, or C. And yes, they did raise the concern. Aren't some of these people going to come from other places? And we said, yes, but those people are important too. And, um, and so the main stipulation that we got from other councils was we want it to be drug-free. We want it to be families with children. We want you to make an impact so that these people aren't stuck in poverty. That's the main requirement. Of course, people say we'd like it to be as big of a local impact as possible. And regardless of who lives in it, we get credit for all of the units <laughs> for our RINA numbers, I'm assuming? Yeah. And that is accurate, um, city attorney, that we can't stipulate what percentage is tied to our affordable housing funds? Mm, that's correct. Okay. That makes a huge difference to me. So how do you win? You tell me I'm not allowed to ask you for what I'm asking you. Thank you. Um, uh but I can tell you, the arena numbers, they don't get credit. For, so far, they haven't given us credit for that. For that. Oh, really? But, the, but when we, for the new ones coming up, that are coming up, we're fighting to get credit to for get that. To get credit for them. Yes, but, but in the past, they've yeah. not given us credit for that. For re, redoing things or rehabbing yeah. things, they only give credit for new. Okay. In the past. Even though it's housing more people, per se, or yeah, whatever. It doesn't, they yeah, they're, they're, it's the state. Wow. So also have they're to fun. Yeah. yeah, right. So Okay, <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to tell you I appreciate you changing the site. Um, I think that's, that was a, a great move on your part, and I know it was a, delayed your project quite a bit. It probably cost you a little bit of money, too, and always time always costs money as well. But I, I think this is going to be the best for your program, for your people, and I think best for the city of Vista as well. Um, you know, I hear my colleagues and some of their concerns. Uh, these are concerns that I've had in the past as well. And I think, Chris, you and I have discussed this many times. Um, but one of the things you have to remember is the homeless population that we have here in Vista is no different than the homeless population in any other city. People come from all over. I think if you go to uh, poll or survey some of the homeless uh, families, homeless individuals that we have in our city, uh, you're going to find that they're from Minnesota, they're from Arizona, they're from Carlsbad, who knows where, you know, I mean, they're, they're from all over the place. So it's really difficult to say we only want to help people from Vista. You know, the, the homeless population, again, whether it's the population that you serve or the, the single uh, male or female that's, you know, living in the park, um, they're, they're, just, they're homeless, you know, and we, we probably really can't say, hey, if you're from Vista, we're going to help you, you know. We want to help the, the homeless, you know. And I, I want to bring everybody back to some of our city council top priorities, our goals for 2018 and 2020. There's three, there's several goals that we have, but three that I think are being addressed by this. One is obviously the strategic plan to address homelessness. Continue to decrease blight and improve the city's image. 
I think this uh, complex, uh, if you're familiar with it, uh, I think this would be a, a huge improvement. Postal Annex, was a, that was a huge improvement on our city. And I thank you for that project. Um, and the fact that crime has gone down there, I mean, uh, safety, there's another one. I didn't even think about that, but I mean, that's obviously one of the, our goals as a city council. Um, but one of the ones that I think we sometimes forget about that it's on our uh, city council goals is maintain standards for multifamily housing. And I think that uh, Solutions for Change has demonstrated that they've been able to do that. Again, if you look at any of their projects in throughout the city, in other cities, they've always improved uh, the stand standards of housing. Um, the one on California Street, I think that's a, a beautiful project. You know, I feel comfortable going in there. It's clean. It's well run. Uh, I, it's it's regular. I mean, and I've toured the apartments. I've done the ones on Postal Way. They they look like any other apartment. They look very nice. It's a huge improvement in what was there. So, you know, we're, we're meeting several of our goals. I think with this type of a, a project, um, I will say that, Chris, you and I, I don't know if you remember, but it's been about two or three years, but we were standing in your parking lot, point, I pointed to that complex. And I know at that time, you weren't able to do it, but I was telling you, I want what you did with Postal Way to happen over here. And then, you know, we started on this other project. That's why I really appreciate the fact that you are switching to this project, because that's one that I've been pushing for, because I knew it was nearby, and it, it's going to be a big improvement to the neighborhood there, to the people that live around that area. Um, again, people are from all over uh, the universe here in Southern California. Um, let's get back to the affordable units. You know, I mean, there's been talk about that. You know, this is coming from our affordable housing uh, funds, but to me, this is exactly what we're building. We're building affordable units for people in the most need. You know, and in addition to that, we're putting them into a program that's going to help them long term, where hopefully someday they won't need those services down the road as well. So your children won't need that, right? That's awesome. I mean, I, I thank you for being here. I know it's hard to come up here and address us, but you, sh you should be proud. I'm sure your girls or, or boys are, are proud of you for being here, and uh, you're doing a great job for them and for their future family as well. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the affordable, affordable developers, we never tell them, God, you know, we, we do tell them we'd like to help people from Vista, but, you know, we don't hold them to that standard either. And, and I know that you mentioned that earlier, Chris. Um, so I, I think it would be unfair to do this. And, and again, I'm just saying, going, getting back to, we're trying to help as many people as we can in, in the Vista way and the Solutions for Change way as well. So I will be supportive of this. Councilman Franklin, but before I say that, I wanted uh, my city manager uh, corrected me and said uh, that Chris is building new units, and for the new units, we would get cr credit for the arena numbers, but it, it's, if it's a rehab, the rehab stuff, usually we don't, so anyway. Okay, Councilman Franklin. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I thought you made a really important point, and I just want to kind of uh, underscore it and say it a different way. Um, the funds that we're proposing to invest here are from our affordable housing fund. Uh, and I was reminded by staff in the discussion about this that they lawfully cannot be invested into uh, direct support for, say, a shelter that would serve uh, homeless men uh, or even homeless families. Um, and uh, there are several components. Uh, solutions serves families for a three-year cycle, and, and I think in some cases even beyond and this is uh, not the intake portion of the solutions program. This is the long-term supportive housing, affordable housing component. Uh, we can't lawfully invest these funds. If we choose not to invest them here, we wouldn't be able to take these same funds and invest them into a different program. So I think I heard that as a, a big concern, and I just wanted to make that point that we wouldn't uh, be able to redirect these funds uh, directly to a, a traditional, the, the sort of shelter portion of another program. I thought that was important to, to mention. 
Um, I think the, the residency requirements have been uh, addressed. Um, as far as regional funding, one of the reasons that I couldn't say no to the request to bring this forward is because we have a major, what was the amount of county funds that was potentially on the line here? 7.1 million. We have an opportunity to leverage $7.1 million through our $2.7 million investment. Uh, that was something that I couldn't look past, that if we could put this amount of money in, we could multiply it many times over, uh, and that certainly represents a regional uh, source of funding from the county. Uh, I thought that was, uh, that was very important. And one of the other things I couldn't help but point out in the whole residency issue is, you know, once you're living in a car, uh, I'm not sure how you define where your city of residence is. Um, and I think that's something that we have to, to have a heart to understand. Um, in this, uh, one of the conversations I had with Mr. Johnson yesterday was what happens if the county money doesn't come through and we've invested, um, you know, and I think uh, that Chris and Patrick had a conversation today or yesterday about, uh, you know, sort of the fail safe and our recovery of our investment uh, or the assets that are purchased with our investment uh, if the other funding doesn't come through. So. Uh, what I want to see is an investment that protects the people of Vista's taxpayer dollars um, and to make sure that we have certain performance guidelines built in. And if those performance uh, you know, metrics are not achieved, that we have some surety. Uh, that was one of the big reasons why I said to Chris, I, you know, I really like the fact that in the other projects that we've invested in, we remain the, the owners of the land. And because of that, we have a long-term ability to uh, demand and exact a higher standard of, uh, of operation. And to me, that's really important, and that is a great, I mean, that is something that the staff and this council, you know, going back to the, the development of those projects, deserves a tremendous credit for, because one of the things none of us want to see is uh, something that we leave behind. I mean, I, I've always, you know, I, I say to the staff, when I'm no longer on the council 20, 30 years from now, and I'm driving past something that we authorized to be developed, I want, in my old age, to drive past something in Vista and say I'm proud that I did that, not that I authorized something that became blight. Um, and I think solutions in all of the product um, that they have developed and that we have seen, the, the product is remarkable. Uh, and the, the evidence is, is in the, the proof. Um, you know, Chris, I think it's not a surprise to you that one of the biggest criticisms that people have about you is you don't take no for an answer. And <laughs> I think uh, one of the, the biggest praises that anybody could say about you is that you don't take no for an answer. Um, I mean, I got to tell you, you know, Chris asks, and if he doesn't get what he, what he needs, he asks again. He's persistent. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of the reason that he's built such a successful operation. Um, I think it's right for us to ask in return for solid accountability and metrics for performance. And that's what I'm asking you to ask the staff to build an agreement that achieves those. And I, I want to invite all the members of the council to communicate with staff what those metrics of accountability should be that should be included in the agreement so that when this comes back, because we're going to have this conversation again uh, in 90 to 120 days whenever we get the agreement drafted. Um, and my hope is that we, because you provided the metrics and the accountability factors that you want to see, my hope is that you say, because the, the, the metrics that I wanted included are included in this agreement, uh, that we've got an agreement that we can all, I mean, I, I, I want to do this on a consensus basis. I, the community, one of the things I learned in the last two years, I really opened my ears and my heart to the community. The community wants us to address the homelessness situation. And as I said before, this is not an investment in the homelessness services portion, but this is an investment in the, the ramp to success that a homeless services organization in our community is providing to rehabilitate individuals who have been homeless back into society and to uh, and to finally solve uh, the the cycle of dependence for those individuals and uh, and I am also excited about helping uh, solutions leverage and export its model 
um, because on a national basis, a national scale, uh, we're not seeing the model that says, I love, Chris, when you talk about suit up, show up. Uh, yeah, there was one more I forgot, I left out of that, but up. get up, suit up, show up. I love that because, you know, the rest of the world that gets up every morning uh, earlier than we want, uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult for us to grasp why people who are in need don't take the steps to solve their own problems, but I think it's also that perspective is because we've had the behavior modeled for us that was the right behavior, and there's a lot of people who, unfortunately, that correct behavior wasn't modeled for them, and this program is about uh, modeling that behavior and teaching them a new way of living, and that's a component that does not exist in the other programs and projects that we funded. Uh, and so for that reason, I really can't see, and I'm not aware of another opportunity to, to invest these funds that would achieve so many of the objectives that have been outlined here. So with that, I would, I would, uh, I don't, I don't think I had a second yet, but I would just renew my motion uh, to instruct staff to work to build an agreement that okay. this council finds uh, agreement with uh, that's agreeable to solutions as well uh, and, and the, the county so we can leverage those funds and, uh, and then come back for a final discussion uh, to approve a, a final agreement. I'll second it, Mayor. Okay, motion and a second. Okay, Councilmember Green. All right, so kicker for me was unfair or illegal. I like writing down those words because I never want to be unfair or illegal. So having you uh, allocate all of my funds to what I want is unfair and illegal, not going to do that. So I do want to talk about some awesome things, okay? Number one, getting your project off Vista Way and moving it over there. High five. Got a few calls. Nobody liked that, unfortunately. Great diagram. Um, the other thing, and kind of to pile on for what uh, Councilmember Franklin said, is the guy doesn't accept no for an answer. And um, he'll keep coming back until he has has something that's feasible and that's actually going to help Vista. And what's good about that is no one else is coming to us with this. We have money sitting in an account that we're not doing anything with. So this is something that can benefit our community. The other thing is, as I said, hey, what happens if we give this $2 million and we only have $1 million left in our affordable housing account? We don't want to drain that. Good news is, for the next six years, it's my understanding we have about six hundred k per year coming back in. So within six years, that affordable housing fund will be back up to about four and a half million dollars and over the years we can still look at other projects that we can kind of invest in and and help vistas for um so the other thing that kind of tickled my ears is I'm also a good businessman, and I think putting $2.7 million into a project that is a $20 million redevelopment project in that area is huge. Um, so I don't want to say I was a naysayer when you showed up, but I was definitely skeptic. And uh, in looking at all the information and everything you provided and the benefit that it's going to leave with Vista, um, I think that it's the best item, the best option that we have going right now. So I appreciate you showing up. I appreciate you answering my questions, and uh, next time I'll be much easier on you if, if it's unfair and illegal. I promise. Thank you. Customer Rigby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't think I heard anybody say we don't want to help other people that aren't from Vista. I know I didn't say that. The comment was we do a lot, and this is a regional issue, and it should be dealt with regionally, and it should be dealt with, re with regional funds. That's my point. And I do know that other cities do contribute. I've seen it before here in our own city, Carlsbad, Oceanside, San Marcos, they contribute to, uh, to projects here to benefit people that they know from their communities that will be here. That was my point. Um, nobody's saying we don't want to help, only that we only want to help distance. That was never said. Um, and I agree that you are tenacious. Um, you don't take no for an answer. You keep coming back as evidenced by how many times in the last couple of years you've come to this council asking for money, which has been a few times. Um, so, um, and I did have the question about what happens if we agree to this and you don't get the county monies, but I guess that was answered. That was answered already. Um, I don't agree with the, the comment or the thought, because I've had conversations regionally, that the, there are other programs that this money could be available for, but we haven't had them here and they haven't approached us. That doesn't mean that I'm not looking to engage with those programs, 
because we do have a huge community of homeless people in, in VISTA, and not all of them are available or eligible for your program or Operation Hope program. So that's still my sticking point. As I said earlier, that's the sticky wicket, that's the fly in the ointment for me. Uh, we have limited funds. You do a great job, there's no denying that. But I would like to see other programs come into VISTA or be created in VISTA to help the other people that are not being serviced by this. You do a great job. I, I'm happy to see what the development changing over on Vista Way. So I, I understand what you're doing and what you're trying to do. The money part is the issue for me. So, so I, I, I have enough. Uh, I'm going to support the project. So I, I, there are enough places. Other, I, we have Alpha Project, Project Raphael, Green Oak Ranch that support single men. There, there are other and there are other ones that I don't even have the names up here I know that are, that are working in this. So we, I think we have enough programs to help. And then um, what we don't have, the other cities back us up So as we do them. So I'm, I'm going to support this project. So I'll just ask for your votes. Councilor Butt. Councilor Butt. That project, or that project, that motion passes for it to one, what? I just want to say that we will, from a staff perspective, we'll work with Mr. Megason and his team in uh, creating a disposition development agreement to bring back before you, likely in the next 60 to 90 days, uh, for your review and approval. Okay, thanks. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our next discussion item, uh, D4, which is uh, fiscal year 2018-19 first quarter financial report. Finance Director Lauren Worm will provide the staff report. Good evening, Council. The fiscal year 18-19 first quarter report provides a summary and comparison of general fund budget to actual results. General fund revenues and expenditures are consistent with budgetary expectations for the first quarter. Significant amounts of cash receipts are not received evenly throughout the year, so we would not, to be, we would not expect to be at 25% at this time. There are 18 budget adjustments requested those are explained in detail in Exhibit 2, which is on pages 8 to 10 of the agenda report. The adjustments do not have a significant overall impact on the general fund or on other funds. The largest single item is for $300,000 and is related to the Traffic Congestion Management Program. And that is for revenue which is already received. And staff is requesting to make additional progress on road improvements. So the recommendation before you tonight is to receive and file the fiscal year 2018 to 19 first quarter financial report and adopt the two resolutions for the city and Buena Sanitation District amending the operating and capital budgets. Councilmember Green. I move that we accept the staff's recommendation and we receive and file the first quarter financial report and we adopt the two resolutions as specified in the report. Do I have a second? A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Do we have any speakers? No, no speakers. Okay, with that, um, please cast your votes. That motion passes unanimously, which brings us. Thank you, Ms. Warren. <laughs> brings us to um, the end, sort of. Comments. <laughs> this, is, this is a special meeting, so we don't have any, there's no um, speakers. So um, I, I'll do my comments and then I'll go with you guys. So I have, um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of events taking place this weekend to kick off the holidays already, December. The Chamber of the Annual Christmas Parade is um, Saturday, December 1st. And on Sunday, both the Vista Village Winterfest and the Vista Community Clinic's Holiday Homes Tour is going to take place. On the following Saturday, December 8th, Santa will be at the Rancho Buena Vista, Adobe, and information is available on, on our city's online calendar at cityofvista.com for that. Um, the Vista Chamber and the VVBA have kicked off the Shop Vista and Win Holiday Shopping promotion. For every $5 of uh, sale tax generated at a Vista retailer, participants can receive a raffle ticket to win a fabulous prize. So learn more of that at the cityofvista.com. 
And lastly, the San Diego North Economic Development Council will be recognizing the Norm Reeves Honda dealership at their upcoming Excellence in Economic Development Awards reception on December 7th at Cal State San Marcos. The new facility currently under construction is expected to create 100 local jobs in, for North County residents. And there's information um, on that event is online at sdnedc.org. So that's those. And so I will turn it over. I'll start down with Councilmember Green. Lucky me. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you everybody for showing up and staying here this evening. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I just want to thank my council members for uh, your brains and your thoughts tonight. Uh, all the comments that you had I thought were real good. And I love that you guys all did your research. And every decision we made I thought was awesome and benefited the city tonight. So it's exciting. And thanks again everybody for showing up. Member Franklin. I also just wanted to wish everybody a happy holiday and uh, hope that you had a great Thanksgiving and uh, appreciate all of your open minds and arts tonight. Councilmember Rigby. I just want to say thank you also for everybody who came tonight and all of you who are still here. We don't usually have a crowd at the end of a meeting. And thank you to staff for all that you do for the city. Deputy Mayor. Uh, ditto. Just wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully they all enjoyed it with friends and family and uh, wish you a safe holiday coming up. I would ditto everyone's comments and um, it's actually going to be a, a lot of holiday things going on soon. So wish everybody happy holidays. Council, uh, council member. Councilman, whoa. I'm, <laughs> I don't council member, that. city manager. Promoted, <laughs> Promoted yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's a promotion or not. <laughs> no comment. Um, I have a, a few updates for you. Weather and permitting on Thursday, November 29th, uh, there will be several lane closures downtown in and around uh, Vista due to the construction work at 100 Main Street. So specifically, the right northbound and right turn lanes will be closed at South Santa Fe from Vista Village Drive to Main Street and the westbound lane on Main Street from Indiana to South Santa Fe will also be closed from 5 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we're, uh, there'll be uh, detours in place uh, to notify motorists, but we'd highly encourage people to stay away from uh, the area during that time. Uh, again, that's weather permitting. So if it's raining, then the work will probably not proceed and, and go forward either on Friday or next week. What day is that supposed to that be? That is on Thursday, November this Thursday? 29th, yes, this Thursday. Day before, day after tomorrow. Yes. Got it. Uh, on Monday, December 3rd, from 2 to 4 at the Vista Library, they'll have flu shots for people age 9 and older. So if you'd like more information, you can call the library at 760-643-5100. And the city is collecting unwrapped toys for our marine adopted unit, HMLA 369. Uh, we would appreciate if people want to donate toys, do it before December 7th. Uh, the Marines are going to have a Santa fly-in to, to give the kids the toys. But we will be accepting toys all the way to December 21st and uh, donate those to uh, HMLA 369. And lastly, the Vista Sheriffs are working to keep residents safe during the holiday season by uh, having our Vista Holiday Watch. So areas like North County Square, Vista Village, um, there's ramped up patrols from the Sheriff's Department. So. And, so, and Saturday is supposed to rain, so the parade goes on rain or shine. That is correct. I remember being in a parade one year for lots of rain. A few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago. Year. I remember getting big yeah. poured. Yes, yeah, I, I remember that. So, and then the other thing I was going to, is the streets will be closed. Um, the parade starts actually at our Civic Center parking lot here, and it starts at? This parade starts at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Okay, it starts at 1 o'clock, and it streets goes. Will start to be closed around 1130, I think. Yeah, streets, and, and they'll be closed. Which streets are going to be closed? Do you know? Daryl? Civic Center, yeah, just for people, people Part, in town. Parts of Civic Center in and around downtown. <laughs> just for the yeah. Don't go South anywhere Santa between 11 and 1. <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay, with that, city manager, anything? Uh, I mean, whoa, 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 don't promote him. <laughs> <laughs> anything else from city manager <laughs> and the no. city attorney? <laughs> clerk? <laughs> city clerk? System clerk? Okay, we're, we're, we are adjourned. <laughs> Ha, <laughs>